You are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. The interview starts now. Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist and vocalist Ricky Miller. Ricky's coming to you from the great city of Cleveland, Ohio via the virtues of Skype and that allows us to be in two places at once. So, Ricky, thanks for taking time to chat with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Ray Our pleasure. And as always, we like to get to know a little bit about you. Tell us a bit about your bass journey. How did you get started in music and in bass? Well, in music, I started playing piano when I was five. I got lessons from my great-grandfather. He was kind of like a honky-tonk player, you know, he did like a boogie-woogie stuff, which mm -hmm. was very cool. I was around the age of five when he started giving me lessons, and I did that for a while. I was reading music, but I think I got to a certain age, like around like 13, where I was like, you know, this isn't cool, you know, I'm not doing this, and I started like skateboarding and stuff like that. I was kind of being, I think I reached that age where I was kind of being like, you know, a rebel, mm -hmm. I thought, you know what I mean? I started playing guitar when I was 13, though. Know? Then my first band with my father, actually, I was 14. That next year, I started playing out. And that was in uh, an ACDC AC tribute band, funny enough. And I did the Angus roll, and my father did the Bon Scott. So yeah, that was my first journey going out and, and playing live in clubs and stuff like that, which was cool, mm -hmm. you know? You know, because I was making money, and I was like, oh man, I made it! You know, I'm like, screw school, I'm yeah. making money. You know, I did that for a couple of years. I started my first original band when I was 18, 19, something like that. It was a band from Akron, where I'm from. It's called The Hobbs. I did that. We put out some albums. And that's when I first met Mike and Ryan in the band. We were working at Guitar Center in Akron, Ohio. That's where I met them. And I actually heard of the band. I was like, oh, Red Sun Rising, you know, they were playing all the time. And I was hearing their name everywhere. And that's when I met Mike and Ryan. I think my band opened up, my, my old band opened up for them a couple times, which was, you know, kind of cool. After my band disbanded, I was just doing like the solo acoustic singer-songwriter type thing. And then um, I was playing every Wednesday with Mike at a hookah bar called Karma Cafe in Akron. We would go to work. I think I got off work at like 4 o'clock. I was at work from like 8 to 4, you know, standard day, and I'd go home, and I'm like, I got to take a nap. I am like exhausted, like in a half hour. But like Mike would show up to my house unannounced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So we actually did that for a while. Like I would do a set, he would do a set type thing, and we'd go like back and forth. But after a while, we started collaborating as one, like going up and doing songs together. I think we did Led Zeppelin Rock and Roll. We did some of my own songs that I wrote. And I think it's then when they, Mike and Ryan, they, they quit Guitar Center to make um, the first album. They were in LA making Polyester Zeal. I got a phone call one day and Mike actually called me at work. I was, you know, because I was in the warehouse, I was doing my thing. I was yeah. probably hiding yeah. or something. He knew you the know. number. He knew the number. Yeah, yeah. He had it saved in his phone, I think, so that was <laughs> kind of bizarre. <laughs> but yeah, he called me, he's like, Rick, we need a bass player, and we need a guy who can sing the harmonies. Can you be on a flight in like three days? And I'd be a liar if I said, no, I don't know, man, I got this job. But I was like, I was like, hell yes. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, should I quit now? I think my exact words was, should I quit now? Because mm -hmm. I was ready. I was ready to leave Akron, ready to, you know, get out in the world and, and play music. So that's when I quit my job. I said, guys, I quit. I got like an opportunity that I'm going to pursue. And they found out that it was Mike and Ryan. You know, they're like, oh, I heard that you're going to join the band. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's exactly true. And I'm leaving in three days. That was my very first plane ride, too, ever. Wow. I was like 25, 26, around there. And I flew Akron to Chicago, Chicago to LA. And I wasn't nervous or anything. No, I was. I was actually sitting there. I remember my flight from Chicago to LA. I was sitting there. 
you know, I'm kind of nervous. And I was sitting next to this older lady, right? And she was all calm, cool, and collected. And I'm kind of, and I think I was wearing my sunglasses to hide my, you know, my fright. And <laughs> she was like, and she looked at me. She's like, it's your first time? And I'm kind of like, I'm like yeah. 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 Yeah, it is. So she kind of calmed me down. I think her name was like Claudia or something. So thank you, Claudia, for calming me down. <laughs> and so, yeah. You and you survived the flight. Now the transition to bass, which again with guitar, you go, okay, it's strings. I can make that leap. But a lot of times when people play guitar, when they transition to bass, they have to change the mentality and the way they're thinking because of the more percussive element. And kind of one of the notorious things is guitarists like to noodle a lot more than bassists really should many yes. times. And and, yeah. and so the, the classic story my teacher told me, because I played guitar before I was playing bass, I would start noodling around and he's like, you know that thing you just did? Don't, don't do that. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's too much. It is, it is. It's really, you got you to gotta hit the right. groove and, and keep it kind of in the pocket here. Let the uh, guitarist cut loose on the solos, but it's, it's not, not your thing just yet. You know, get the, the basics down. So yeah. you kind of learn... I guess baptism by fire, jumping in to play bass right away. Yes, absolutely. And through the fire, I went. They actually told me too a few times. They're like, Rick, always play the low strings. Always play the low strings. You know, because at first I sat at home for a while. I had like a couple months to sit down and kind of get my head on straight with it and kind of get used to it. Because it took a while. You know, because at first I was like, okay, it's... It's kind of the same as guitar, but it, it, it was. And as you said, you got to keep it in the pocket and keep the groove. I'm still learning, you know. I'm I'm still learning. I'm still I'm like a sponge. I'm gonna absorb all the knowledge I can. It took practice. I just sat down with it, you know, and tried to get in sync with it. And I think I'm I'm doing an okay job so far. I think I'm you know I'm getting it. And I think the um, the new album will prove that. So putting it kind of in perspective, you've been with Red Sun Rising now for how long? About three years. Pretty wild. Time flies. You mentioned a new album. You guys have a new album that's dropping uh, later this month, Thread? Thread, yes. It comes Thread. out March 30th. So in like 17 days from now, mm -hmm. it's exciting. And then we actually have our first date of our first headlining tour. Sunday, the 18th, it's in Syracuse. So yeah, we have a solid like five, six week run headlining our own show, which is, you know, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, after that, we got like festivals and stuff like that. So it's like the whole circuit is running. It's, it's being recycled all over again. <laughs> I've had the, the opportunity to preview uh, the videos that are out. Both Death Wish has, has been hitting the charts yes. really, really solid and fascination. Mm -hmm. Those two, very sci-fi-ish for, for, for those. I, I know I, people are going to want to see the videos. I'll make sure I include the links. There is kind of the, the interesting angle as a sci-fi buff myself, recognizing, you know, certainly the, the apocalypse in, in Death Wish and what would you do if it was coming kind of thing. And then with Fascination, the old Jules Verne uh, silent yeah. movie bit of... Oh. Uh, a French film, yes. Yes, it's, Journey to the Moon, kind of classic cool. with that is a very, very interesting, very different, but, you know, some very driving tunes, you know, really catchy. I can see why Death Wish kind of catches on because it makes you kind of keep going and, and kind of replaying it in your mm -hmm. head. And then you can sing while you play, which is another kind of unique thing, I think, for for bassists. It, it requires I, the both sides of your brain, I guess, because... I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still learning. There you go. I but I think one of my biggest heroes is probably Paul McCartney. Huge Beatles fan. And just, you know, and I'd watch him too. You know, I'd watch old videos and kind of get inside of his head because he's Paul McCartney. He's one of the greatest. He played bass and he wrote songs and he played piano. And, you know, that's, that's probably one of my biggest inspirations. Paul McCartney. Well, Sir Paul also picked up the bass due to the necessity because they needed somebody to play bass and True. 
to, to make matters more complicated, being left-handed, picking it up. But what he did bring, which I think is kind of the thing that has made it so memorable, is a more harmonic approach that wasn't the way the bass players were thinking. And yes. so you do have some things that were influenced by guitar playing or keyboard playing that you'd go, oh, I wouldn't have thought of putting that there. But it, it so totally works in that's retrospect. It. You go, wow, that or or that's what made the tune. Right. I, mean, I mean, everybody that listens to just kind of the opening of Come Together, you kind of yeah. go and, OK, yeah, this is this is something oh. I wouldn't have expected to hear. Right. But it's so cool, you know, fits, like you said. Mm -hmm. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Oh, no. totally. Well, and it takes some accepting because the early work that they did had so much of the Motown tunes. As a matter of fact, they were yeah. lifting tunes from Motown performers. Right. And the approach to them was the very straightforward kind of James Jamerson, straight, mm -hmm. you know, keep it simple. But it's when they started writing their own stuff Right. That, that that could get incorporated and you go, okay, wow, that's, that's nice. And that's different. And of course, so many people yeah. emulate it. So let's talk about how you get your sound because gear is a big part of it. And of course, I know that guitar players probably are as guilty of having gear acquisition syndrome as bass players are. It seems to be a pretty endemic thing with bass players. We're always looking for the bass that feels the best or, uh, right sounds the best yeah, exactly. and and yeah. or works with the kind of music we're playing because there are in an arsenal of choices if you're playing rock there's bases that lend themselves more to that kind of stuff when you're young uh weight tends to be less of an issue but the older you get then yes you, then you start yeah. going this thing is killing me what yeah is <laughs> i'm losing the feeling in my hand because this I is this thing. What are these getting like this tingling feeling in my hand? What yeah. is this? this you know? Yeah. And yeah, man, I totally agree. I do have like this, you know, this pain that I get right, you know, right here sometimes. I'm 29. I think my mortality is kicking in, as you might say, you know, because you know, I've been playing out for 15 years now. I feel, yeah, about 15 years. Having that weight, you know, is it heavy? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. cause going to be a problem after a while right now i'm using the sterling music band the mm -hmm. stingray four string i've had it for a while see right now I'm, I'm at that stage where i'll i take what i can get <laughs> you know what i mean i hear you and then i got the um ampeg svt classic head that i just got used recently which sounds great solid and of course i got the 810 cabinet which is it sounds great but you know, there's also those those pros and cons because you do have to load it and unload it. <laughs> so it's like a giant fridge. We don't have like the help that we need sometimes. So you'll see me up there, or <laughs> seeing us up there. Come on, baby. Yeah. But yeah, it, it sounds great. So that's that's all that matters is if it sounds good or not. And it sounds great. Dean actually sent me this bass a few days ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I have it right here. I'll show it to you. They sent me a Paramount P bass. Oh. This pretty gnarly. Mm hmm. Four strings. So, yeah, I've been, uh, been playing this guy. I got a hookup from Matt Fisher, who plays with Shaman's Harvest. And he's like, Yeah, man, if you want, I can give you a hookup. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So, I talked to Josh from Dean. And thank you, Josh, mm -hmm. for sending me this Dean. I've been playing on it, salad. Um, I still haven't plugged her in yet, but we have rehearsals starting tomorrow. So tomorrow's the day. So we're going to get that going. Very nice. Very nice. And do you have a choice of strings? Anything particular yet or still exploring? Um, I have been using the Ernie Balls. I've been using the, the 110s gauge. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I've been trying to experiment with it. Somebody told me. If you put, like, if you're playing a five string and you put the heavy, you know, it's B, right? Yeah, B. The B string, where the E would go. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that, but it sounds very interesting. So mm -hmm. I might experiment with something like that, but yeah, just an idea. Somebody did tell me that that's how they were stringing their bass 
yeah. it was a four string, but they were they were going B E A D um, because they preferred the lower notes. But the guy's hand was kind of small, and the wider fretboard was dip, more difficult to negotiate. And so he was uh, stringing a Jackson like that. There's all kinds of interesting things you can do with some of the alternative tuning. I actually started on five string, so I've always had the low B, and I've really come to appreciate it for most part because it, it just gives you that that kind that, that, of oh, gut wrenching, punch yeah. in the chest kind of sound that you go, okay, that's I'm going where nobody else can go, and the evil vibrations. That, oh yeah, violence. I know there's the new release. You've got touring planned. Uh, mm. Any long-term plans that you guys are thinking of doing? Or, you know, it sounds like you're very centered with this particular project with Red Sun Rising. Yeah, we have a pretty busy year ahead of us. So it's, it's kind of hard to find mm -hmm. something else to do right now. But we have that first headlining tour. And then we have some festivals after that, and then we have some dates with the band The Used. They are going on tour sometime in the summer, so we got added on for at least a handful of dates with them, which is exciting. It's going to be here in the States, too. And then after that, pretty much, you know, doing like the whole like festival circuit again, which is, you know, it's exciting, it's fun, it's fantastic. I can't wait. Favorite is a going to a festival. I think my favorite festival has to be rock on the range you know it's the home state of ohio and i will never forget second time we played it um it was like two years ago i've never seen a crowd so big it's the home state so you know you, mm -hmm. it's a hometown pride type thing going on but yeah it was woo, one for the books it's nice when that happens it seems like a lot of times it takes a bit before performers get recognized like in their own home you know they, they can travel the world around and, and be famous, and then back home, nobody knows who they are, you know. So it's, it, it's great to hear that Ohio is, is supporting of the arts. And, of course, yeah, yeah. this is usually where I tell people, make sure you go out and see live performances. If people want to know where you're playing, I found redsunrisingmusic.com. That is it, yes. That's our website that has all the dates, our merch, and you can also pre-order the album thread too on there oh nice one click away <laughs> there you go well F ricky thank you so much for taking time to chat with us folks thank red sun rising ricky miller check them out see them in concert see them in a in a berg near you most likely enjoy the the music check out the videos i was digging them so i'm sure that you will too and really looking forward to thread coming out you've seen him here ricky miller coming to you live on bass musician magazine Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.